It's a lovely sunny afternoon in London and I'm delighted to welcome you to episode 3 of Get Your Fix. Today's conversation is all about reframing. The what, the why, the when and the how. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But before that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Rina Dial, and you're in a wonderful weekly video cast called Get Your Fix. It's every week, it's free, it's always under 10 minutes, and it's all about offering you a new idea, a new technique, perhaps refresh your mind with a suggestion or plant a seed that might help you become a more effective leader in every aspect of your life. When our mind looks through a life event or a situation or a decision that has to be made, it gives it a certain meaning. That meaning is called a frame. When we look at that same life event, that same situation through a different angle, we call it a reframe. As you can imagine, a reframe would result in a different set of actions. Let's dig a little deeper into the psychology of reframing and juxtapose it with an activity every leader must do, decision making. You see, when we are growing up in life, we start creating certain filters, which later on help us interpret the world around us. These filters could be our value systems, it could be our life experiences, it could be something that we learn from society, from our parents, from our peers. This is what helps us give meaning to life or is our frame of reference. Similarly, when a leader has to take a decision, he or she looks at the data points and gives it a certain meaning. That meaning comes from the filters that he or she uses. This could be something that they learned in a business management course. It could be their own work experience. It could be what they learn from their boss or their peers or their seniors or even their teammates. All of this data point, the leader takes in and gives it a certain meaning and takes a decision. But if they were to interpret those data points in a different way, it could result in a reframe. And a reframe allows them to explore new choices. You see, a reframe is where the opportunity lies. Reframe is where an organization can look at what's happening around them and come up with an answer or a solution which could be very different, which is what companies have really been doing around when they have been creating disruption in the marketplace. Driverless cars, what exactly did they do? They looked at the whole concept of driving and said, what if you were to take out the equation of a driver, something that one would never think about? and suddenly it resulted in a completely new product. So has been the case with companies like Amazon, which has been one of the biggest disruptors in the market. They asked the question, what if people were to not go to the shops? What if we were to manage stocks in a different way? And therein lies the success of Amazon. So that's really what reframing is all about. So why is it that a leader should learn to reframe? Why must they encourage their team members to reframe? And why should they make all the effort possible to create a culture within their organization where reframing is the norm, not the exception? Well, I've already alluded to some of the reasons, but some of the ones that I can bring up again is one, it promotes innovation within the organization. It actually reduces workplace stress. Because when people know how to deal with challenges through the art and skill of reframing, they come up with new choices. It helps businesses become market disruptors. It helps a leader learn new ways to lead themselves and their teams and businesses in a way that they want to be more productive and in a way that they can challenge the status quo and almost in a way reframing helps create dissonance within the organization, a dissonance which is productive. 
here are some statements which are perhaps certain belief systems that can exist within an organization. Read them. Look at the first point of view or the first frame of reference and then look at the reframe. You can imagine that if a leader or an individual was to believe in the first viewpoint and then replace it with the reframe, the actions would be so much more powerful and so much more effective as new choices get revealed. So now we come to the question about how does one do reframing? I'm going to do a few things to be able to answer this question. One is I'm going to offer you a process. The second is I'm going to offer you an activity that you can do that can help you develop the capability of reframing. The third, I'm going to do a short example to explain how being selfish is actually being generous. And I'll end it up by throwing a few questions at you where you can practice the whole skill of reframing. The second way to be able to build up the capacity to reframing is through an activity that I'm going to suggest. I call it mindful walking. Now there's no such phrase as mindful walking, not that I'm aware of, but you'll see where I'm going with this. Mindfulness is all about being able to be present in the moment where you're using all your senses to be able to see, smell, sense, hear all of your senses so that you can make sense of what is happening and be present in the moment. That's something that's really important for being able to reframe because when you're trying to reframe, you're disregarding the norm, you're disregarding the belief system and you're looking out for cues to be able to take new decisions or to look at the same situation and event through a different angle. So mindfulness is something that really helps. Walking. Well, research has shown that the more walking one does, it helps in defining and redefining the creative abilities of a person. The energy flow, the fresh air, the oxygen in the brain, and when they have that kind of an activity taking place, it helps an individual actually be more creative. So how about if you were to combine the two and to do something known as mindful walking? In fact, if you want to know a little bit more about it, there is an organization that actually does something which is close to it. It's a company called Street Wisdom. And for, in fact, based on their framework, I'll be introducing some free streetwise walks in the city of London starting this month onwards. You're very welcome to join me in case you're there. I will promise I'll have the link for you at the end of this video. So that's the activity that I would suggest. Why don't you try it? Because it might make a difference to you. As ever, it's been an absolute pleasure for me to be with you today. And I hope today's conversation has planted a seed and provided you an insight to a new technique that you could perhaps incorporate so that you could reframe your way to success. Thank you for your time. Thank you.